about the anointing of David, right? We didn't finish 16. We did. We did that on January 16, verse 20. Um, January 16, we did Samuel 16, 1 through 23. So we didn't get to 17. So um, we never went to the next chapter. Okay. So we okay. only did one chapter. But we did do it in... For Samuel 17 tonight. Okay. This um, time we will be consistent. All right. Do you want to read over chapter 16? Okay. okay. It'll, be, it'll be a fast read. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Uh, Lord, as we get into your word, we just pray that you will speak to us through your word, that we will get something from your word tonight. We invite the Holy Spirit to take us deeper into the scriptures, to wash us with your word. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. It says, The Lord said to Samuel, oh, first Samuel 16. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you continue to feel sorry for Saul? I have rejected him as king of Israel. Fill your container with olive oil and go. I am sending you to Jesus who lives in Bethlehem. Because I have chosen one of his sons to be king. But Samuel said, If I go, Saul will hear the news and will try to kill me. The Lord said, take a young calf with you. Say, I have come to offer a sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice. Then I will tell you what to do. You must appoint the one I show you. Samuel did what the Lord told him to do. When he arrived at Bethlehem, the older leaders of Bethlehem shook with fear. They met with him and asked, are you coming in peace? Samuel answered, yes, I have come in peace. I have come to make a sacrifice to the Lord. Set yourselves apart to the Lord and come to the sacrifice with me. Then he set Jesse and his sons apart to the Lord, and he invited them to come to the sacrifice. When they arrived, Samuel saw Eliab, and he thought, Surely the Lord has appointed this person standing here before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look at how handsome Eliab is or how tall he is, because I have not chosen him. God does not see the same way people see. People look at the outside of a person, but the Lord looks at the heart. Then Jesse called. Uh, how do you say his name? Where, where are you? Uh, verse 8. Abidab, Abinadab. Abinadab. And told him to pass by Samuel. But Samuel said, the Lord has not chosen this man either. Then Jesse had Shama, Shama pass by. But Samuel said, no. The Lord has not chosen this one. Jesse has seven of his sons passed by Samuel, but Samuel said to him, The Lord has not chosen any of these. Then he asked Jesse, Are these all the sons you have? Jesse answered, I still have the youngest son. He is out taking care of the sheep. Samuel said, Send for him. We will not sit down and eat until he arrives. So Jesse sent and had his youngest son brought in. He was a fine boy, tan and handsome. The Lord said to Samuel, Go, go appoint him because he is the one. So Samuel took the container of olive oil and poured it on Jesse's youngest son to appoint him in front of his brothers. From that day on, the Lord's spirit worked in David. Samuel then went back to Ramah. But the Lord's spirit had left Saul and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. Saul's servant said to him, see, an evil spirit from God is troubling you. Give us the command to look for someone who can play the harp. When the evil spirit from God troubles you, he will play and you will feel better. So Saul said to his servant, find someone who can play well and bring him to me. One of the servants said, I have seen a son of Jesse of Bethlehem play the harp. He is brave and courageous. He is a good speaker and handsome and the Lord is with him. Then Saul sent messengers to Jesse saying, send me your son David who is with the sheep. So Jesse loaded a donkey with bread a leather bag full of wine and a young goat, and he sent them with his son David to Saul. When David came to Saul, he began to serve him. Saul liked David and made him the officer who carried his armor. Saul sent a message to Jesse saying, Let David stay and serve me because I like him. When the evil spirit from God troubled Saul, David would take his harp and play. Then the evil spirit would leave him and Saul would feel better. I'm going to read 17. The Philistines gathered their armies for war. They met at Sukkah in Judah and camped at Iphias, Damon, between Sukkot. 
I don't know how to say those names. And Azikai. Azika. Mm-hmm. Azika. Saul and the Israelites gathered in the valley of Elah and camped there and took their positions to fight the Philistines. The Philistines controlled one hill while the Israelites controlled another, and the valley was between them. The Philistines had a champion fighter from Gath named Goliath. He was about nine feet, four inches tall. He came out of the Philistine camp with a bronze helmet on his head and a coat of bronze armor that weighed about 125 pounds. He wore bronze protection. Uh, he wore bronze protectors on his leg and he had a bronze spear on his back. The wooden part of his large spear was like a weaver's rod and its blade weighed about 50, 15 pounds. And the officers who carried his shield walked in front of him. Goliath stood and shouted to the Israelite soldiers, Why have you taken position for battle? I am a Philistine, and you are Saul's servants. Choose a man and send him to fight me. If he can fight and kill me, we will be your servants. But if I can kill him, you will be our servants. Then he said, Today I stand and dare the army of Israel. Send one of them, send one of your men to fight. When Saul and the Israelites heard the Philistines' words, they were very scared. Now David was the son of Jesse, an Ephraite from Bethlehem in Judah. Jesse had eight sons. In Saul's time, Jesse was an old man. His three oldest sons followed Saul to the war. The first son was Eliab, the second son was Aninadab, and the third was Shema. David was the youngest. Jesse's three oldest sons followed Saul, but David went back and forth from Saul to Bethlehem, where he took care of his father's sheep. For 40 days, the Philistines came out every morning and evening and stood before the Israelites' army. Jesse said to his son David, Take this half bushel of cooked grain and ten loaves of bread to your brothers in the camp. Also take ten pieces of the cheese to the commander and to your brothers. See how your brothers are and bring back some proof to show me that they are all right your brothers are with saul and the army in the valley of elah fighting against the philistines amen Amen. um um verse 20 excuse me Early in the morning, David left the sheep and went with another shepherd. He took the food and left as Jesse had told him. When David arrived at the camp, the army was going out to their battle positions, shouting their war cry. The Israelites and the Philistines were lining up their men to face each other in battle. David left the food with the man who kept the supplies and ran to the battle line to talk to his brothers. While he was talking with them, Goliath and the Philistine champion from Gath came out. He shouted things against Israel as usual, and David heard him. When the Israelites saw Goliath, they were very much afraid and ran away. They said, look at this man. He keeps coming out to challenge Israel. The king will give much money to whoever kills him. He will also let whoever kills him marry his daughter, and his his father's family will not have to pay taxes in Israel. David asked the man who stood near him what will be done to reward the man who kills this Philistine and take away the shame from Israel. Mm -hmm. Who does this uncircumcised Philistine think he is? Does he think he can speak against the armies of the living God? The Israelites told David what would be done for the man who would kill Goliath. When David's oldest brother Eliab heard David talking with the soldiers, he was very angry with David. He asked David, why did you come here? Who is taking care of those few sheep of yours in the desert? I know you are proud and wicked at heart. You came down here just to watch the battle. David asked, now what have I done wrong? Can't I even talk? When he turned to other people and asked the same question, they gave him the same answer as before. Yet what David said was told to Saul and he sent for David. David said to Saul, don't let anyone be discouraged. I, your servant, will go and fight this Philistine. Saul answered, you can't go against this Philistine and fight him. You're only a boy. Goliath has been a warrior since he was a young man. But David said to Saul, I, your servant, have been keeping my father's sheep. When a lion or a bear came and took a sheep from the flock, I would chase it. I would attack it and save the sheep from its mouth. 
When it attacked me, I caught it by its fur and hit it and killed it. I, your servant, have killed both a lion and a bear. This uncircumcised Philistine will be like them because he has spoken against the armies of the living God. The Lord who saved me from a lion and a bear will save me from the Philistine. Saul said to David, Go, and may the Lord be with you. Saul put his own clothes on David. He put a bronze helmet on his head and dressed him in armor. David put on Saul's sword and tried to walk around, but he was not used to all that armor Saul had put on him. He said to Saul, I can't go in this because I'm not used to it. Then David took it all off. He took his stick in his hand and chose five smooth stones from a stream. He put them in his shepherd's bag and grabbed his sling. Then he went to meet the Philistine. At the same time, the Philistine was coming closer to David. The man who held his shield walked in front of him. When Goliath looked at David, he saw that he was only a boy, tan and handsome. He looked down on David with disgust. He said, do you think I'm a dog that you come at me with a stick? He used his God's names to curse David. He said to David, come here, I'll feed your body to the birds of the air and wild animals. But David said to him, you come to me using a sword and two spears, but I come to you in the name of the Lord, all powerful, the God of the armies of Israel. You have spoken against him. Today the Lord will hand you over to him, to me, and I will kill you and cut off your head. Today I feed the bodies of the Philistine soldiers to the birds of the air and the wild animals. Then all the world will know there is a God in Israel. Everyone gathered here will know the Lord does not need swords or spears to save people. The battle belongs to him and he will hand you over to us. As Goliath came near to attack him, David ran quickly to meet him, and he took a stone from his bag and put it into his sling and slung it. The stone hit the Philistine and went deep into his forehead, and Goliath fell face down on the ground. So David defeated the Philistine with only a sling and a stone. He hit him and killed him. He did not even have a sword in his hand. Then David ran and stood beside him. He took Goliath's sword out of its holder and killed him by cutting off his head. When the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, they turned and ran. The men of Israel and Judah shouted and chased the Philistines all the way to the entrance of the city of Gath and to the gates of Ekron. The Philistines' body laid on the Sharam road as far as Gath and Ekron. The Israelites returned after chasing the Philistines and robbed their camp. David took Goliath's head to Jerusalem and put Goliath's weapons in his own tent. When Saul saw that David saw David go out to meet Goliath, saw asked Emir, commander of the armory. Emir, who is that young man's father? He just sent the message to Jesse. <laughs> Last chapter. Emir answered, as surely as you live, my king, I don't even know. <laughs> the, what, 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 what verse are you uh, 55. Oh, here it is. I'm looking at the wrong <laughs> As surely as I live, my king, I have no clue, <laughs> basically what he's saying. Then he said, the king said, find out whose son he is. When David came back from killing Goliath, Abner brought him to Saul. David was still holding Goliath's head. Saul asked him, young man, who is your father? David answered, I'm the son of your servant, Jesse of Bethlehem. Bless the reading of the word. There's so much, so much in those two chapters right there. Especially 16 and 17. So... What are your thoughts? What are your what are, what stood out to you? What points, advice, thoughts, questions, anything did you get from those two chapters? Um, um we can't come to you to mourn after what God has rejected. Mm. No matter what it is, if God has rejected it out of our lives, we need to release it, let it go, yeah. and keep on moving. Because as long as we're sitting down mourning over it, we're missing out Amen. Okay, on the plans of God, God. going forward. Amen. Amen. In verse 1, he says to Samuel, he says, how long will you mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Yes. Amen. He says, fill this horn with oil and go. I'm going to send you to Jesse to provide me a king among Jesse. Mm. You know what I love about God? He already has a plan. Yes. There was an already a plan set in motion. 
Amen. And he sat and he watched Samuel morning, 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 and morning. And he says, you know what, Samuel, how, how long you been? <laughs> you know, just get up, get, get the oil and go anoint my king. You know, I love him. Yeah. You know, um, he knows, this is why the Bible says, um, lean not unto thine own understanding, understanding. but in all thy ways, that thou was, the Lord. The Lord already had a plan. The Lord already had his eye on, on David. Lord David. He already seen David's heart and mm. knew David's heart. And so, therefore, he already had pointed out that David was going to be king. He was just waiting for the appointed time. Um, Remember, um, what's his name? Preached about the time the that time. he could only be born in this time. You know, yeah. God had an appointed time. time. And right. so, the time had come. Um, Samuel to stop mourning for Saul. Yeah. I've already given you thirty days. That's it, you know. And so yeah. that that is so profound, you know. Mm. Um, definitely, definitely, that, and um, uh, and I just with that, uh, I just it's like, you know, we as human beings, I'm pretty sure all of us do it. You know, we. We mourn a little longer than God want us to, you know? Like, destiny was, you know, waiting on Samuel to anoint David. But see, he's still here, you know, all, you know, crying like, ah, you know, I didn't think it was going to go like this. I thought Saul was going to be this king. So, you know, and I, I feel for Samuel because it's like. That was the first. Yeah, it's, I feel like. King. That was anointed. Right. And, I, and so I felt like he, you know, the Bible talks about after how Joshua led the people. And then after Joshua, you know, there were judges and how each time they fell. So. And then there was a judge that came up and the people served God until that judge fell again. And there, you know what I'm saying? So Samuel was like, you know, he kept order. Right. And Not, he loved God. And right. I think it was he was disappointed that Samuel had that Saul had disappointed. Right, Samuel. not not even that. Just the irony, like you know, Eli basically you know trained Samuel up, you know, and Eli fell. Now Samuel raised somebody up, and that person fell. It was like the opposite happened. You know, the teacher fell at first, and now the student fell. But I know. You know, Samuel, I just think Samuel was just sad, you know, just like, man, you know, I feel like it. And I feel like it was, it was, I think the thing about it, was, it is that remember he was sad when they asked for a king. Yeah, he was definitely sad. He was they so had sad king. when they asked for a king. That means, you know, and God said, listen, don't be sad. They're rejecting me. They're not rejecting you. They're rejecting me. Right. You know, and so I felt like Samuel felt like. He was going to make a king out of Saul. You know what I'm saying? Right, definitely. And that Saul was going to make God proud. proud definitely. And he he fell from, you know. Right. The, yeah. And, the first time. Right. And it's like, and it's like, um, you know, it's like, you know, say I, I raised up Mari from next door, mm -hmm. you know, and I raised him up and all this stuff mm -hmm. just for him to at this point, you know. It's be like, dang, you know, you were under my wing. Yeah. I can, you know, I kind of feel like, I feel like Samuel felt like it, he was disappointed in himself. Yeah. Like, dang, maybe I, I messed up in my training. I just think he was just sad that, you know, this was the first game he was trying to train up. And yeah, you know, he was disappointed because he, I think he probably wanted God to be proud of him. Too, yeah. Like he said that, you know. You know? He, but it had nothing to do with Samuel. Samuel. It had to do with Saul's heart. Right. And, you know. right. and, you know, I always be thinking, like, why why didn't Samuel remember what God said at first? Because he was like, okay, y'all want a king. This king is going to make y'all sons work today, pass out, and make y'all pay all your supplies and all that stuff like that. I, I don't I, But I just feel like in the moment, you know. He probably lost hope. Samuel. I think he lost hope because he knows that Samuel knew God. And I think Samuel knew that God had a greater plan. Um, I just think he was just very disappointed in Saul. Right. Yeah.
We can all, you know, relate to Samuel when we think something was supposed to stay in our life, but it, it went away, got it ended or didn't work out how we wanted to work out. So we just are there, you know. But God is saying it's greater out there than I'm greater for you. You know, more yeah. far more than you can imagine, fathom, yeah. comprehend. So Amen, amen. What else? Amen. Um, also, um, so he got to verse 5, and he said, Peaceably I'm come to sacrifice. And when he said, verse 4, Samuel did that which the Lord came to Bethlehem, and the elders of the town trembled at his coming. <laughs> you know, I, I, I pray, my prayer is that we'll have more Samuel anointing. Amen. Samuel anointing. In this season, that, you know, more of our leaders will have that anointing where they'll be so serious with god you know the bible says that none of his word fell to the ground which means that anything he said came to pass amen you know yeah it was like he was you know it's like a heat of hell you know he spoke as if he was god uh, you know the word was coming out amen. of his mouth god had put the words in his mouth mm -hmm. and so um i pray that our pastors in, in this season, in this dispensation, in this, you know, because we have the Holy Spirit, you Amen. know, that they will be more Samuels Amen. coming up in this generation where, you know, people are not questioning what they're saying because whatever I say is going to come to pass. Amen. God says it's going to rain for 10 days straight. It's going to rain for 10 days straight. Amen. God says it's not going to rain for 10. It's not going to, you know what I'm saying? Amen. Their word is their word because they are the mouthpiece of God. So that just is really something. He said they trembled at his coming. And they asked him, are you come peaceably? You know, mm. or did something happen? Did God put a verdict on us? You know, right. amen. And he said, peaceably, I am come to serve, sacrifice unto the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. You know, sanctify yourself. You know, people in this generation, what I've noticed, they, they come to God anyhow. Anyhow. Because that's what is taught. You can yeah. come to God anyhow. anyhow. But God is very specific and in the book of, I think it's uh, uh, um, Numbers, where he told Moses how to build the tunics and everything yeah. for them to be on, on the pulpit. He says, put a tunic underneath, you know, the bloomers, which is, which we now know as underwear. Yeah. God is the one, it wasn't Victoria's Secret that came up with it, it was God. Yeah. You know, he says, lest I see their nakedness when they come up on the platform. Amen. And so we have people coming up on the platform worshiping, um, you know, leading worship and all of this, and they're dressed That's anyway. Right. The Bible says it brings death. death. God says, lest I kill no, you. Okay. You. Mm. This is how you should be dressed. He gave right. them specific information on how you should be dressed when you come mm. up on the pulpit. And so we have people coming. He says, sanctify yourself. You can't just have anybody coming up on your pulpit wow. to minister, to teach. They've got to know how to re reference the Spirit of God. God. Amen. And, um, and, to, uh, and I feel like it also means... Uh, as you bring up numbers, it, and it says the Holy Spirit, not in numbers, but it says the, the your body, you know, is not yours. It's, it's God's. Of God. So I feel like also and it deals with our, and he's righteous. you know, so we can't keep, just, people make too much excuses. And keeping, right? and keeping our uh, bodies healthy <laughs> and eating right thing instead of junk, because, you know, you, you gotta, if you believe in the scriptures, in the word of God. So you believe that your 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 uh, body is the temple of God. And you see how detailed God wanted his temple. And how clean it says. Even if you look, touch the utensils, you die. You know, stuff like that. So, yeah. I feel like also, you know, our bodies too. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah, but can't. it's very significant that he talks about how they sanctify themselves. Yeah. Wash yourself, them apart. cleanse yourself, put yourself... Right. Set yourself apart, you know, yeah. because we're going to meet with God. Amen. Amen. And he sanctified them. So that really um, stood out. And then what also stood out to me is that he had eight sons. Seven of them were home. And the youngest son, 
yeah. or working. Excuse me. Remember how Jacob loved Joseph and Benjamin? They were his youngest sons. He did not, he, you know, let them out of his sight. You know, it's like I, if I sent Joseph down to the field to see the guys, I knew that's where I sent him, you know? And so, but the youngest son, he had out tending the sheep. There were only three of them that were in the army. So what and, were the others doing? And I feel like, I feel like because... It it depends, you know. You could take that from a a kind of a lot of perspectives, because in the army, you know, somebody's over your child. You know, they're not on their own. You know, you know, somebody's directing them and stuff like that. No, no. Look, just look, just hear me out, though. Mm -hmm. But it's it's true though. You got a commander. If you send your son to the army, you know you got a commander. You know he got a team. You know he got a squadron. But when you're sending your youngest son taking care of a flock, take care of another life. And that, you know, that's because back then they wasn't just taking care of cattle for no reason. It was for life purposes. Mm -hmm. you, you know, you get me? Mm -hmm. So that was kind of a responsibility. But, you know, who knows? You know, of course, Jesse didn't call David. So, you know, it was kind of something that was kind of iffy. But that was a, a responsibility that David took proud in, took pride in, you know, amen? amen. Do you kind of feel what I'm saying a little bit? You know, you could take it from another perspective. Mm -hmm. Good. Good. And so um, what the lesson that even Samuel learned here was that God doesn't look at the outside. The outside. He looks at the heart, you right. know, doesn't look at the house side. They look buff. They look big. They look like they were kings, you know, yeah. that they could be kings. And so God said, no, you are looking at the flesh. I'm looking at the heart. I, I want to see what's in your heart. Because remember, God is about his people. Right. God loves his people. And so in order for you to lead God's people, you've got to love God. And remember, God said David was a man after his own uh -huh. heart. Okay. David looked out for the people of God. Right. And, you know? and it was funny how his brothers called him wicked. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just like um, Joshua's, uh, Joseph's brothers didn't like him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so God already has a plan. God already had a king that he had planned. And this one was nothing like the first one. This one had a heart like God, which means he had a heart for God's right. people. And he was smart, you know, and he right. had wisdom and he loved God. Right. And because the minute he was anointed, the spirit of the God was upon him. And, and another lesson is that uh the Israelites moved without God and tried to get a king and that failed but this time God moved and it worked God, so God instead of trying to so one would birth out of flesh one right out of birth. right you know <laughs> amen mm -hmm. because it says um then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren and the spirit of the Lord came upon him from that day and forward you know, and another thing I like in verse 30, says he was anointed in, in the midst of his brethren. brother. All eight of them were there and saw him anointed as king. Mm. Imagine that. Can you imagine? Mm. You know, those who probably just, he would come home from the fields and they would just hit him in his head. Mm -hmm. Hey, little one, you know. And here he was, the youngest of them being anointed as the king. king of Israel. And they're standing there like, what is happening here? <laughs> I know. I, they had to been like, they had to been murmuring. No, no, no. Samuel missed this one. Or Samuel it, didn't hear this one, right? They had to been murmuring like, and look, then, you know. He says, and the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and the evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. Mm, God sent the evil spirit. Mm -hmm. Evil spirit came to trouble Saul. Amen. When um, when uh, David was anointed, and the spirit of the Lord came upon him as king. Amen. Amen. Um, Sorry. In here for the night. Sorry, in here for the night. Amen. Amen. God bless God for that. Glory to everything.